Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and Happy New Year. It's 2023 and I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited for what the year has in store. There's a lot going on here in my little life, in my studio, in this channel, and the, my photography career. So I will share all of that as we go throughout the year, but I'm excited and I'm glad you're here. If you haven't been here before, welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. And hopefully today I've got something good for you. Hey! Okay, for those of you who don't know, I am a commercial photographer. I've been doing it for a little over 30 years. I've shot weddings, I've shot advertising, I've done a lot of different things. I've taught college photography for seven years. And in all that time, I have seen one thing that it seems like almost all of us at some point in time, we deal with the problem of out of focus images. We just do. And my experience, I hate to say this, but nine times out of 10, it's user error. We have a tendency to quickly blame the equipment. My lens isn't sharp. This camera doesn't focus right. But most of the time it's us. I hate to say it. I'm speaking to myself. I've done it many times. Usually it's us. Okay, now that being said, let me show you one little thing that maybe you have never thought of when it comes to focus but I think the two go more hand in hand than you might realize. And I have an example from a photo shoot I did just recently. We were hired to photograph a family. So we went down and we were at this location, bright sunny day, not a lot of open shade. Um, it was just very contrasty light. And I had two little people that we were photographing in this family. One of them was only one year old. And if you've ever photographed kids, you know, you kind of take what you can get. Now, we were in this perfect location. The lighting wasn't great, but the location was great. And I had a fill flash and it was going off. But as you can see, here's the shot straight out of camera. There was a lot of contrasty, shadowy light. Now the flash was going off, but you can still see straight out of the camera, there's a big difference between the light that is hitting his clothing and the light that is hitting his face in that shadow area. Since I've got this contrasty situation and I've got little kids and I've got to take what I can get, what I ended up doing was bringing it into Lightroom and pulling the shadows way, way up. Now I know we are bombarded with camera manufacturers telling us the dynamic range of their camera is like 14 stops. And sure, we can pull those shadows way up and save the detail, especially if we're shooting raw. And that's what I did. However, because the shadow detail was so underexposed compared to the rest of the scene. I mean, his clothing was properly exposed. The shadow detail was underexposed. Even though that detail was there for me to pull up, I brought the shadow slider almost to 100%. I didn't change the exposure slider, but I know a lot of times we will do that. And as soon as you start pulling those sliders across, whether it be the exposure slider or the shadow slider, to bring those details up, you're gonna lose softness. Now, maybe you never thought of that before, but let me show you these two areas of this image, one being properly exposed and one being what I would call underexposed, even though the details are there in the quote unquote dynamic range of the sensor, I would say it's underexposed. And when you bring that slider way up like that, you're gonna lose sharpness. So let me run through this one more time. Here's the image straight out of the camera. Here is the image with the shadow slider pulled way up. And here are the two areas that I'm pointing out in this example, the front of his shirt and that button right underneath his chin, razor sharp. His face, which is on the exact same focal plane, you know, with the shirt. It's not like I'm comparing something that's two or three inches back or a foot back. They're on the same plane, his face and the front of his shirt and that button and if you look at his eyes and his nose and his face, not quite as sharp as the sweater and the button. So here's my point from this example. A lot of people struggle with images not being as sharp as they would like them to be. And it's more than just focus, you know, nailing that focus. It's more than just depth of field. Did we have enough depth of field to cover what we were trying to do? Exposure plays a big part of it. Um, another thing is ISO. As soon as you crank that ISO way up and things start getting a little noisier, 
those edges are going to get softer. It's just, it just technically how it works. So if you're pulling your sliders a lot, I would challenge you to, you know, do the best you can to get the exposure and the lighting correct straight out of the camera. I know the, one of the great benefits of digital is that we can do all those sliders and we can run presets and actions and do amazing things to our images. But the more you slide it, the more you bring those shadows way up, you are going to see a difference in the sharpness of your image. So I hope that helps a little bit. Uh, maybe something you never thought about, but something to think about if you are struggling with the focus of your images and not completely happy with the sharpness. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I appreciate the comments as always. If you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. If you haven't left me a thumbs up in the past, leave me a thumbs up and I will see you guys very soon because we got a lot of videos that we're going to do soon. And you guys have a great day. Have an amazing 2023. Look forward to all that the year has in store. And I will see you guys in the next video very soon. Hey!